Good afternoon folks, KF7IJZ here, literally just returning from the Dayton Hamvention. Uh, I'm down here unloading the uh, our, our Honda now, uh, getting stuff inside. Um, I'll apologize, you'll hear some ambient noise, uh, there's some air conditioners going, there's uh, some cars driving by, winds blowing. Um, but I'm literally coming to you out of the, uh, the cargo or trunk area of our SUV. Uh, to talk to you about one of the cool things I picked up at Dayton this year. One of my favorite things about Dayton is the opportunity to get to meet some of the small, uh, low volume and uh, local manufacturers across the United States. It's a great opportunity to talk to them about their products, uh, talk about things that uh, you know work and don't work, give input, and uh, find out why they've designed things the way they have. And for the last three years that I've gone to Dayton, I've always wanted to run into the company iPortable. Um, I'll put their link here iPortable is a manufacturer of, we'll call them radio go boxes and rack cases. Um, they make them completely custom, uh, but they also make a couple of antenna tuners that are very popular um, with folks that are very small, uh, very popular with the QRP and portable crowd. And uh, this year, uh, they had a booth inside, uh, just a couple spots over from the Begali booth. And I was really excited to literally accidentally bump into them because I've never found them before. And I found out the reason I've never found them before is because traditionally they, they set up in the, um, the flea market, which uh, to this day I still have never spent much time in because I really enjoy talking to the manufacturers. Uh, but what we have here today is the iPortable Pro Speaker Rack. Um, this is a ruggedized um, portable radio case that is uh, designed on a, a half rack system. And we'll, we'll go through the case and show you what comes in it and everything. Um, but I've been very interested in this case now for a couple of years. I've never had an opportunity to get my hands on one. I've never been able to see one. I've never met anybody who has one. Um, I've never seen any videos dedicated to this. So I definitely wanted uh, to take the opportunity to put together a video as uh, one of my favorite Dayton finds. The unit itself is manufactured from something called MDO, which I'm not familiar with. Uh, I always thought it was MDF, but it's not. Um, and the manufacturer told me that's for uh, better weather resistance. It's something that sign makers use for things that are going to be outside. And then the case is painted with this textured, uh, what he called outdoor speaker paint, which these are the, this is the type of paint that you would find on like um, large PA speakers that are going to be set up outside. On each of the four corners, you have these uh, plastic textured uh, corner protectors. These are very thick. They are plastic, not rubber. Um, and what's nice about these is that if you own multiple of these cases, they stack on top of each other pretty nice. And now, one of the things that has changed, because this case has gone through some revisions over the years, is um, I believe there used to be some type of a metal latch uh, that one would use uh, to open this, but they've gone away with that and they use Velcro now to hold the panel on and then you just have these finger holes. I would have liked to have seen latching materials kind of like um, a gator case, but this, uh, he said, has proven to be more reliable. I just think it cuts down on the um, weatherproofness of the case overall. Um, also, these doors are not sealed, but we'll go into that in a minute. As far as physical specifications, like I said, this thing weighs uh, about seven pounds. We see that it is one foot wide, or I guess we'll call that deep. So 12 inches deep by, we're gonna, I'm gonna round up to the nearest inch, 18 inches wide and nine inches tall. So 12 inches by 18 inches by nine inches are the external dimensions. Now, this case is more or less the same on every side. The only difference is on the external here, there is um, one of these kind of self-collapsing handles that's on there pretty good for you to grab it and, and be able to move it relatively easily. One of the things that um, I've run into is that when you try to get your finger in here and I have big meaty fingers, I immediately run into uh, this block he has in here so it can make it a little more difficult. This side, um, actually not sure what I'm running into there, oh the rack rail. So getting the front on can be a little challenging. I may add something to make it easier to come off but these just pull off. And again, we've got Velcro stripping, which I think this is probably self-adhesive. Um, it's not coming up or bubbling at all. Inside the case, if we take a moment to look here at the side section. Here's the rail. There's this thickness, but it's clear to see that this is just... Um, let's, if, I, if I show you the top texture, 
you see how these kind of stick out. It's clear to see that the actual uh, cavity where stuff is mounted is this center section here. And when you look at this, you see the Velcro stripping and then here's the rack rail, meaning this is mounted onto the edge of the center box and these are lips um, that are added. And in fact, I don't know if you can see, but um, when you look in here, you can see this is, there's um, kind of a ridge that gets added there. But uh, so if we look in here, the, the case itself comes with some papers. Um, you get an overall kind of product description of what this is. Um, he gives you a lo another large diagram and basically this is just instructions saying if you're not planning on stacking multiple of these together there's a feet, um, a rubber uh, foot kit included which I'll show you here in a minute. And then finally there is a mostly complete circuit diagram and I say mostly complete because the USB power block is just a block. Finally out of the case we get some uh, rubber feet and the appropriate hardware. I asked the question about um, being able to drill through this material and he said it would drill quite easily. Um, I asked about how the paint would hold up and he said the paint won't flake or crack that it'll it'll drill cleanly through. And here we are looking at the front of the case. Um, despite my comments about uh, you know not being perfectly waterproof, one thing I really do want to relay is this case is very professionally assembled. I mean it, it really I mean it feels like a commercial product. I don't feel like this is cheap or something that put uh, something that somebody put together just in their backyard in their spare time. I mean it really is uh, very high quality and sturdy. Um, if we take a look here, <coughs> basically this is a rack um, that there are holes in here. I don't know if that comes through, but those are meant to be able to run uh, screws down to attach your mobile uh, radio mounting brackets and whatnot to, obviously from both sides. It's height adjustable. Um, and then over here, and this is probably the neatest feature of this case, is uh, this is what the, makes it the Speaker Pro. Um, you have a three inch uh, speaker, headphone jack, the two USB charging ports that I again mentioned are half an amp each. Independent fuses uh, for two circuits uh, that are built into the box in the back. Um, an overall incoming power fuse, <coughs> sorry, that's the green one, and then a fuse for your 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter, and then a set of power poles, and the power poles can be used either to get a tap off of a power supply connected in the back, or that can be the way you run power into the box. Um, if we do measurements real quick of the interior, and I'll do, I'll do from the rack, the rack is nine and a half inches, um, well actually that's not quite true. I'm going to call that about 10 inches, um, assuming it's a little bit more than that, uh, just a little bit more than 10 inches wide for our interior height. That's going to give us right at 7 inches. Um, and then the overall interior width, 16 inches from edge to edge. So again, you've got just a t shade over 10 inches usable dimension that way and a shade over oh just yeah just seven inches that way now I still have the back cover on if we measure the depth I have safely we'll say 11 and three quarter inches 11 and a half inches something like that um, depth to be able to play with and what they tell you from a specification perspective, because I think he measures it from the interior of the rails, this space was designed to be eight and a half by 11 deep. So it was designed to be uh, a sheet of paper, but the actual specs are a tiny bit bigger than that, but I don't know how usable that will be. As I had mentioned, the back panel comes off as well. It uses the same Velcro alignment. Now, one of the things that I think has changed on this um, from the original version is I think the original version had a panel that came all the way back and kind of cordoned the section off, which is one of the reasons um, I was worried this wouldn't be big enough for my applications. But as you can see, you actually have all this space sideways. So for larger radios like an ICOM 7100 or a Kenwood TS480, um, you actually can turn the RF deck sideways and have it fit like this, which was something that I had originally not conceived of. Um, give you an idea, safely, 
you've got about seven inches of space until you hit the back of the distribution block. And of course your total width back here, about 14 and a half inches of usable space. Um, your amount of height back here will be dependent on where you put the rack. But one of the interesting things is this space right here between the rack side and the wall side is almost exactly the same width as one of the small uh, power works um, switching power supplies. Finally back here you have three power leads and the audio lead. This is um, wired as a stereo connector but based on the fact the cable is only two conductor um, it's set up as mono so I don't know why they chose to use a stereo. Uh, that may be something I replace. You also get three power leads and they're labeled um, basically one, two, and then this is DC in so you know um, there's a fuse on the front for this, a fuse on the front for this, and a fuse on the front for this. And this will be connected to your power supply, or if you're like me and you run a separate power box, um, you'll, you'll connect to that in the back. But it's nice to see uh, you've got the flexible wiring options. This is 12 gauge. Uh, each one of these runs is probably about 18, maybe 20 inches long, uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, look for a video in the near future of me moving some type of radio equipment into here. And as always, thanks for watching.